Hello everyone, my name is Roslyn Young and I want to show you how I use the Ponsai Rectangle Chart with my classes. This is part one, dealing with the first five vowels. This is the chart that I use. As you can see, it's a color chart. I could use a phonetic chart like this one, which is set out in exactly the same way as the previous one. However, I choose not to. The big advantage of a color chart is that I can then use the same colors to show spellings and spellings in words which allows the students to be able to read the words correctly without my having to intervene. As you can see, it's divided into three sections. At the top of the chart, you have the vowels. In the central section of the chart, you have the consonants. And at the bottom of the chart, you have the schwa sounds, shui, schwa, and shwu. The first sounds that I will be dealing with in this video come from this line. These are the long or tense vowels in English. And the one that I start with is this one, ah. I choose ah because I've never yet met a student who couldn't say ah, and I have to say the sound because otherwise the students would not know what game we're playing. They might be tempted, for example, to say purple. So I point ah and say ah and indicate to the students that this is what I want them to do. And they say it, ah. Then I point to it twice and indicate to them that I want them to do this, and they say, ah, ah. Then I might vary the rhythm. For example, and the students would say, ah, ah, ah. Let me show you what this gives in the classroom. Ah. I go on to the next sound, which is this one. I choose this one because it's in opposition to ah. This is what I do. I point it, and then I go like this. And everybody says e. Now I point to it several times, changing the rhythm. For example, and the students say e, e, or And they would say e, e, e. Now I put the two sounds that we have into sequences. For example, I might go like this. And I would expect the students to say ah, ah, e, ah. If they tried to say I, ah, I would stop them from doing this and make them say each of the sounds that I point individually. Ah, ah, e, ah. Now I'll show you what this gives in the classroom. Now I go back to the other side of the chart, to this one, and this is what I do. Everybody says or, and then I work on it for another couple of seconds until people have said it two or three times. Then I incorporate it into the rest of the chart. For example, I might do this. And I would expect the students to say, or, ah, or, e, or. This is what it looks like in the classroom. I give several other examples like this to make sure that the students are keeping the sounds well in their mouths and then I move on to the next one which would be this.
This is the first time we have to deal with a sound which can be a little tricky. This is what I do. First, I show them what kind of sound we'll be looking for. And once the students start saying this sound, which they usually do, I then pat my lips to show them that it shouldn't be rounded. They often struggle with this because this is not what most people do when they're trying to make this sound. And this is where it becomes obvious why it's very good to have a big class. A class of 20 or 30 is much better than a class of one or two. And just in case any of you have not found what this sound should be, it is oo turned into the English version of it, which is oo, 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 unrounded, as in two. This is what it looks like in the classroom. As you'll see, I joke with the students who are French. In French, this sound is heavily labialized, so I point out to them that it can even be done with a smile. to this one and this is what I do. I point to it and then I show the students. At first they're rather surprised because there's nothing and then some of them try it and they make what they make and I select one which is the closest to what I'm looking for and uh, we work from there. This whole process takes about five minutes. You can see it if you look at a video called Working on Pronunciation in English Part 2 on the Pronsai channel on YouTube. In my next video, I'll show you how I introduce the consonants.